Hello and happy, happy Tuesday. My name is Wendy Lee and you can find me at creativelyyours.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. and excited that you're here with me in the studio today for a little bit of paper crafting fun. Yay! So I'm excited today because I just got back from a demonstrator exclusive event in Houston, Texas. So I got to reconnect with some of my favorite people in the world, right? Um, from all over, which is even better, right? And uh, meet some new friends as well. So it's very, very exciting. I love going to these events. Uh, and it's one of my favorite things about being a demonstrator. So yes, there's that. So today is Tuesday, March 19th. Can't believe it's so late in the month already. And I am going to show you today's project is going to be a sneak peek of the project that I'm going to put down in this month's Cultivated Creativity DIY Paper Crafting Kits. So Let's get to our crafty fun. Oh, I should tell you, if you're watching this video when it premieres on YouTube, I'm here live with you in the chat so I can answer all your questions and get to know you a little bit better. If you're watching the replay, it's still great to leave me uh, a comment and I will get back to you for, with, and answer any questions that I can. All right. There is a supply list that will post uh, later this afternoon as well. The link to it is in the video description below. So you have the complete supply list and cut dimensions. All right. Thanks so much. Let's switch over and get crafty. All right. So for today's project, we are using the perennial postage and painted lavender stamp sets that are part of the perennial lavender product suite in the mini catalog love these this is gorgeous the whole suite is fantastic so today i wanted to show you guys how to create a white card a basic white card with a little bit of pop of color but we're going to do a little bit of a fun technique to create some texture in the background which really helps you elevate a, a white card right i love a white card they're elegant um they're beautiful and you know they're just good for many, many occasions. So the project we are creating, let me grab that, is, da, da, da. this is going to be the bonus project that I am putting in this month's Cultivated Creativity DIY Paper Crafting Kit. So we are featuring the perennial postage stamp and die bundle, right, which we're using here. Um, and then guests also have an option to add on the painted lavender if they want, although they don't need it to make their projects, right? Um, it's just an awesome, awesome thing. And we've got some other goodies in the kit. So um, we curate an amazing kit each and every month uh, with lots of great goodies in it for our guests. Um, and so we would love for you to join us. And today, is it today or tomorrow? I've got to look at my calendar tomorrow. Tomorrow is the very last day to be able to join us. If you're not already a subscriber to Cultivated Creativity, tomorrow's the last day to join us and get this amazing kit for, um, you know, packed full and get this lovely, lovely bonus project. Uh, so we do add a completed project in the packages you know just as a little thank you and then uh the tutorial will also be included with this a pdf version so all right so let me uh get started with this so let's start with our scoring detail because that's kind of the the big wow i think that we've got going on so i think this is super cool you see that all that cool detail in there Love it, love it, love it, love it. All right, so I've got my Simply Scored. Now, I have marked with a Sharpie every one inch. And I did that years ago. And I'm glad I did because I use this all the time. So what I wanna do, and it doesn't matter which line on your scoring tool you use, but I'm gonna line the upper right and lower left corners on the same line on my scoring tool, okay? and then I'm going to score this. Now I'm gonna use the larger ball because I want a lot of definition here. So I'm gonna give it a pretty good pressure to get that started and we're gonna pull straight down. Now I've had people ask me before, they were struggling to stay in these score lines here and I find if my body is square in front, right? Like I'm not off to one side or the other. If I'm square in front, I do much better, not that I don't make mistakes, but I do much, much better if I do it like that. So I need to position my body over as I work through this. Now, I forgot to mention, 
This is three and a quarter by five and a half piece of basic white cardstock. Now the complete supply list with cut dimensions, um, there's a link in the video description below and this is already live on my website. So you can go ahead and grab that, um, that recipe right now if you want to. But stay with me, let's have some fun, right? All right, so we've scored every one inch. Now I wanna go back and I wanna score a second time an eighth of an inch over from my first score line. So you can create any pattern you want. This is just the pattern I have chosen to do, right? There we go, and one more. All right, so we have, when I flip that over, look at that, we have a great, great diagonal print going on here. Now, I want to make this the triangles, right? So I'm gonna put it back down opposite corner. I'm gonna take my other top corner and my other bottom corner, right? My left top and my right bottom, and I'm gonna repeat the same process. So every one inch, so we're gonna do that first. I find it easier to keep track of if I do one of those measurements at a time. You could do both at the same time, but I, I do better if I do one at a time, right? Because I've got my lines marked on my Simply Scored for every one inch. And now it's super easy to just go an eighth of an inch next to it and do that and not get confused and forget what I'm trying to do, right? Do you guys ever do that? I do it all the time. For sure. All right. The magic. Is that not the coolest? So you, this, you know, the sky's the limit here. Any, any pattern that you can think of that you want to score, you can do so with this technique. So I just think it's very, very cool. Now we're going to take this three and a quarter inch piece and we are going to cut it down to two and three quarters. So that's going to give us a nice extra half inch strip that we will be able to use to bring our design to the inside, which I think is fabulous, right? Who doesn't want to bring the design to the inside? All right, so let's go ahead and get this layered up. So now I've got a three inch strip that I'm going to adhere this to and my Stampin' Steel is where, there we go. And I'm doing this all flat, right? Now, do you need this extra piece of white in there? Maybe not. But again, I think that when you add these little details, when you're doing a white card, you know, the layer on layer, it, it just adds a nice little element here. All right, so we've got a four and a quarter by 11 thick basic white. So anytime I'm doing a white or vanilla card base, I go to thick cardstock when appropriate. Um, so anything that's a standard card, sometimes you've got a fun fold that's got lots of thickness to it and you might use plain white, but I would recommend always using the thick for your card bases as a general rule. All right, so we're gonna lay this and I'm offsetting it. I want it over to the side. Isn't that fantastic? I mean, you don't look at that and be like, oh, that's a boring white card. It is not a boring white card. It's a fantastic, fabulous white card, right? Okay, next. I have already die cut this, but I'm gonna bring this in. So using the perennial postage, I've already die cut this tag right here. Lovely. All right. Now, I wanna take this die and I wanna do a couple of things. So I am gonna die cut this with you. I don't typically like to die cut on screen, but I wanted you guys to see my process and how I went about creating the uh, tab for this. So first thing I wanna do is I am going to come in here. I got my mini emboss machine, yay. And I am going to cut the whole reinforcement from a scrap of Lost Lagoon cardstock. So I'm just gonna lay this right on here. And this is the one I want, this whole reinforcement, okay? So we're gonna lay that on there. Doesn't matter if I get both. The other one's just gonna put a hole in there, but um, I can have it off to the side, no big deal. Okay, so we're gonna cover this up. Hopefully I'm still on my cardstock. We're gonna run this through. Dun, da, da. All right, and hopefully we have a nice whole reinforcement. We do, we have a cute little whole reinforcement. Lovely. All right, so let's put that on. I'm gonna move this aside for just one moment. We are gonna have to run this through one more time, but I don't need it in my space right this second, right? All right, so I'm gonna take this whole reinforcement and let's do a little bit of liquid glue on it. 
Now you can let this dry for a bit if you'd like to um, so that it doesn't ooze. You could have also put adhesive sheet on the back, which would have been really great, but I didn't do it. I forgot. All right, so we are going to lay this at the top because I'm going to make a tag out of this, right? So I'm putting it up fairly high where I want it. Now, I want to string ribbon through that, so I need a hole through that label. So if you have a handheld hole punch, you can totally use that, right? But I want to show you how to use this die to do that. So now this die has the reinforcement and it just has a hole. So now you can lay the hole right there into that tag. I'm not in camera. Let's see. There we go. And place my top pad on. And let's go ahead and cut. Hopefully we'll cut that hole through our tag for us. Like I said, if you want to use a handheld punch, if you've got one, you totally can do that. I'm going to go ahead and put this away as I go. All right, so hopefully that cut out that little bitty hole in our tag. Isn't that great? So it is a two-step process to do, but it works fantastic and you've got everything you need in that die set. All right, so let's do a little bit of stamping here, right? So I want to bring in my gorgeous grape. Gorgeous grape, one of my favorite colors. Okay. And I am going to stamp I'm going to stamp up high for my first one, right? So this is the detailed image. And I'm going to stamp a second one, give it a little bit of space. I'm going to go a little bit lower on my paper. And then we're going to do a third one, again, a little bit lower. All right, I'm going to move this out of our way. And of course, I forgot to prepare my chamois. So let's see if I've got a scrap cloth. We're just going to use a, a tissue, right, to get that ink right off our glass mat. Love it. All right. So now let's bring in our Highland Heather. Now, I find with this stamp, I do better with alignment. Whether I'm aligning it properly or not is another conversation. But I find it better with alignment that I, that I do better with alignment, let me say it that way, if I do the detailed one first. So this is now Highland Heather. Perfect, and I'm just moving down my image as I go. Love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. All right, let's close this up. Again, let's wipe any excess ink right off our glass mat. Now, you could use a scrap piece of paper, um, but I love that I don't have to do that with my glass mat, right? All right, so Lost Lagoon. We're going to add that, these little stems right in here. So again, I'm going to come in here and kind of align that up. Now I find this image, the one that I have the most trouble lining up. But again, if I stamp in this order, I do my best, my best option here. Now maybe that stem is supposed to go up higher, but it doesn't look right when I do it up higher. So this is why I do it the way I do it. So if you're like, Wendy, you're aligning it wrong. Maybe, could be a high possibility. All right, let's get rid of this excess ink. All right, so let's make our tag. I love it. All right, so I've got this wonderful Lost Lagoon bordered ribbon, and I need about, I think it was four and a half-ish inches. That's what I'm gonna do. So we'll just clip that off. And then I'm gonna fold this in half and put the fold through. That way I won't get as much frayed ends to my ribbon. So I've got my loop through. I'm going to hold one end so it doesn't go all the way through and I'll pull the opposite end through. Okay. Nice. Now I want to, and we'll come back and clip this. I want to tie my linen thread around this. So one of my team members, Sheila, showed at one of our team meetings this cool trick because it's really hard to hold this ribbon and tie ribbon around it. So she showed this trick where you take a clip, like this is just a little office binder clip, to hold that ribbon in place, which I thought was genius, right? And I'm gonna take, I don't know, nine, 10 inches of linen thread, and we'll wrap it around and tie it in a bow 
around those ribbons. So this works great when you're in need of like that third hand. Like have you ever tied ribbon and been like, oh, I wish I had one more hand, right? Or you need a friend to be there to help you hold the ribbon so you can tie it. So this way I can do it and my, my little clip is my friend, right? Okay, let's save my art. Okay, my arthritis is not letting me tie. So let's try again. Some days it's easier than others. My hands cramp up sometimes. Gotta love getting older, <laughs> right? All right, although I will tell you, stamping does help with that, right? Like the more you use your hands, uh, the better that is. Okay, perfect. Look at that. So I got my little bow right on there. And then I can come back in here and clip away my ends if I want to. So we'll just clip a little bit off. Is that super cute or what? Love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, so let's pop this right up on our card base. Lovely little tag. Makes my heart happy. All righty. And we will get this right on our card base. Do you love it so far? Is it so pretty? I think it's so, so pretty. All right, let's do our sentiment on the outside next. So let's see, I think I have some, I do. I have a little bit of washi tape. You can use masking tape. You could probably use masking paper. I don't have that handy. But what I'm wanting to do is I only want the thank you. So this is thank you for your friendship. I only want the thank you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask off a little bit of the words next to it. They're pretty darn close together. So I want to kind of tape that off because I don't know that I do a great job of avoiding getting ink on the four, right? I could do okay, but I don't always do great on that. All right. So let's bring in a piece of grape cardstock, all right? And we're gonna take our embossing buddy and just get some excess oils off of that. And then let's bring this up in camera so you can see. And then I'm gonna take my really gross Versamark pad and I'm gonna ink this up so that my thank you is nice and inky. Important. Remember to remove the tape. Yup, gotta remove that tape, that's super important. And then I am gonna stamp this right on this little grape piece here. Perfect. And then we're gonna get our white emboss powder. And we're gonna dip this right down in there and pick up some powder. Shake off the excess. It's okay that I got a little bit out here, but I can just wipe that away with my fingers. If you have a little brush, you can use that as well. Okay. And then I am going to need my tweezers. There are some tweezers right there. And I'm going to hold on to this. Now, I'm going to turn on my heat tool. I don't know if my cord is long enough to reach the uh, table or not, but I'm going to turn on my heat tool and warm it up. So especially when I'm using a dark cardstock, I like to warm my heat tool up first. And then I'm gonna hold it about an inch, inch and a half away and watch it melt the powder. As soon as it starts to melt, move it along. And then you are done as soon as it's melted, right? So it, so it turns shiny. If you overheat, it literally will turn dull again, right? Um, sometimes it'll get a brown tinge. Sometimes your paper will get a brown tinge. And I've actually even seen somebody do it so that um, the paper has flamed up. I know, seriously, have seen it. It's been a while, but I have seen it. All right, now you could fussy cut this out with your paper snips. I am going to try to use my trimmer for mine. Now, I may not even be straight, so I gotta be careful with that. So let's see what we've got here. So I can't really use my paper as a guide, but we're gonna try. So I may want it a little bit closer than that, but at least let me crop this down with my, uh, yeah, see I'm totally crooked on that. Let's see if I can crop this down with my trimmer a little bit, and then we'll go back with our paper snips and, and maybe do a little bit more. Yeah, I'm gonna do a little bit more on that top with my paper snips. But, you know. 
Let's move that a little bit closer. Crop that out. Okay, now I'm gonna go back with my snips and, and clip that top edge again, but at least that gets me close to what I was wanting. Um, now you could totally just do it with your snips. You do not have to use your trimmer. Um, it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. That's, that's the other part, right? It's okay. Now, I wanna pop this up right here on my tag. So because I'm gonna have it straddle, this is popped up and this is not, I'm gonna keep my dimensionals to one end, right? So you can either use like the edge, you know, if you're not trimmed too skinny, you could use mini dimensionals or you could use some foam tape, right? Um, I'm gonna use just regular dimensionals. We'll see how this works, right? Hopefully I am not too wide. Oh no, it fits perfectly. So we're gonna put this in and lay this right on the front of our project. Beautiful, right? I love it. All right, let's decorate a few iridescent pearls. These are one of my favorite staple items to keep. I mean, we have lots of great um, gems to use, but these are by far one of my favorites. So let's put one maybe here and maybe here. And then let's put a third one right up here. Whoops. All right, where'd it go? There it went. We'll put it right there. So super cute, right? Oh, it looks like I got powder all over my card. I was like, what is that? Too funny. All right, so we'll just wipe off our little mat here. Now, I am going to add some, of course, we've got to move our design to the inside. Okay, so for the inside layer, so I've got a two and three quarter inch wide piece. So just like I've had on the front. And I'm gonna repeat the same process, right? I'm gonna do my dark, um, gorgeous grape. And I'm just gonna do two on the inside, right? And again, let's wipe up that excess ink that we've gotten on our mat. And then we are gonna switch colors. And we're gonna do Highland Heather. And let's do our fill image. So again, right over the top, whoops. There's one, there's two, great. And while we have Highland Heather here, I want to add some beautiful butterflies. So this is in the lavender, painted lavender stamp set. These lovely butterflies are in there as well. All right, so one last thing. Let's add the stems in Lost Lagoon, just like we did on the front of the tag, okay? And we will come in here. Let's see if I can line that up, more or less. And I gotta tell you, I've had some where the alignment was terrible, but it still looked gorgeous, right? Stampin' Up! does a really good job uh, making that easy for us. All right, let's get rid of a, our excess ink. So hopefully we don't end up with big fingerprints. All right, so let's go ahead and take this. We're gonna add this right down to the inside of our card base. Now, I'm gonna offset it just like I did on the outside over to the side. Now, sometimes when you put a layer on the inside, see how it's just slightly long? So you could either cut this just a smidge shorter than five and a half, or you can come back with your snips after the fact and cut that off as need be. So then I've got my little strip left over from the front, right? When we did our fun scoring, love. And I can lay this right down here on the edge of my white card. Gorgeous, right? Super cool. So do you guys love it? I hope that you do. I hope that you will give this a try. So don't forget, this is tomorrow, is the final cutoff to uh, join Cultivated Creativity and get this gorgeous card already handmade for you in your packet. Yes? All right, thank you all so much. Have a great week. If you're enjoying the content, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Share it with your crafty friends. We'd love to have them take a break with us on Tuesdays for our crafty projects. And I will see you all again next Tuesday. All right, bye for now.